This video will show the process of a painting from the Technical Animal series by Neil von Flew. Neil is currently typing this into a text-to-speech app, so the narrative voice will now switch to the first person, for a more direct and perhaps emotive description of the process. I create the reference images for this series using the Generative Adversarial Network an A, I. That makes images and allows the opportunity for me to fine-tune the components until I arrive at a picture that, to my eye, captures some recognizable content, but also looks like nothing that makes any narrative sense. I then attempt to translate this image onto paper using traditional painting methods and media. The series title Technical Animal is meant to reflect this process of exchange between technology and the organic and emotional world. After I have created the digital reference image, I move to the sketch which intends to capture gesture and composition first. I knock down the drawing between stages, to build more subtle values and challenge myself to define with increasing clarity. Once the composition and movement are set, I work to establish values. The sketch phase is also great for becoming familiar with the image as a whole, getting to know it by measuring what it will need, making future color decisions, and noting interesting passages or areas of focus that might not have been noticed before I was making a careful study of the image. When the sketch is done, I spray it with drawing fixative. Then apply two coats of acrylic clear with a brush. The spray fixative keeps the drawing from smudging too much as I apply the clear. When brushing out the clear coat, I try to follow some of the movement of the drawing, in order to build some subtle texture. Once the clear coat has dried, it is time for the acrylic underpainting. While the drawing stage is for playing attention to the composition and values, the acrylic stage is more for establishing color. It is done in thin washes, so the drawing is never fully obscured. Because there is some structure already, it's an opportunity to be overly loose and bold with color, knowing that some of the tone may show through in the final piece or at the very least inform the choices that I make when I use the oils to attempt to tie value and color into one. The first pass of oil paint is not meant to be the final say, I'm mostly taking big swings at areas and trying to focus initially on the edge handling in transition areas like the foreground slash background. In the subsequent stages I will make more detailed adjustments so I know I don't need to be exact at this point. I also tend to keep on the light side because I know I can glaze down brighter spots later, to build more subtle shadow and depth. But with all of that being said the more accurate I can be this stage, the less I have to do later. There is a balance between retaining the image's vitality and bringing clarity to the details in an energetic way. And there is second guessing my drawing and underpainting and fixing mistakes, or committing to them. I am using 10 colors. They are Dioxazine Purple Prussian Blue Cerulean Blue Cadmium Red Cadmium Orange Ansa Yellow Yellow Ochre Raw Umber Payne's Gray and Titanium White and I am using linseed oil and mineral spirits as a medium. One of the personal discoveries I've found by making this series has to do with observational painting. The more accurate I am with the reference image, the more I appreciate the final work. In studying the image while working, my mind often wants to make sense of it searching for some recognizable element an eye, or an ear, a sunset or a snake to make the jumble of things that the A.I. has assembled into something that I recognize from our world. And I have to resist the urge to accentuate these things while working. If I can paint the same way that a still life painter might paint a bowl of fruit, 
I find that the image has a better chance of retaining the otherworldly features that I responded to in the first place, the qualities that were provided through its artificial creation. It pushes the interest and challenge back onto craft, or my skill at capturing a likeness as it exists in front of me, not as I might imagine, or intellectualize it to be. Sometimes I think of it as taking art lessons from an artificial intelligence. It is over my shoulder, suggesting that I loosen up, let go of any conclusions that I might have made about the subject, and instead paint only what I can see. When the first and second passes of oil are complete, I let it dry enough to apply glazes. I'm glazing with three colors. Alizarin crimson. Prussian blue. And Viridian green. My glaze mixture is composed of linseed oil, retouch varnish, and a dash of mineral spirits. The glaze will work to smooth transitions and value, to deepen colors and to build interest in areas that might have gotten muddy during painting. Glazes are often applied heavily, then wiped back and I usually do a couple rounds, in order to best control the effect. I keep the painting flat while the glaze dries in order to prevent it from running, but I am also impatient, so I pull the tape off the painting in order to get a clearer view of the work and see what else it might need. To finish, there is a last round of paint in order to hit the highest values and ensure proper color. If I think the contrast needs more work, I might take a picture of the image, then convert it to black and white, and compare the to the reference. I estimate the total working time for this image was about 20 to 25 hours. When it's fully dry I will mount it to a board for more stable display. Thank you for your time and feel free to visit nialvonflu.com for more of his work.